Good evening. Uh, this is the uh, this is the Meet the Coaches makeup video uh, for those of you who are spring athletes, perhaps um, decided to come out for a sport uh, a couple days late, or um, you missed this evening um, for another reason. But I also want to make sure um, that you uh, that you parents who are tuning in, you have a chance to hear this as well. Uh, but I will um, I will start off by just letting. Uh, uh, both parents and athletes know who uh, who they'll be dealing with here in the field house um, over the course of the spring. Um, I'm John Lanzini. I'm the athletic director at St. Johnsbury Academy. Uh, my staff in the athletic department consists of Ben Davis, who's our assistant athletic director, Tara Bailey, who's our athletic department secretary, Chris Despins is our certified athletic trainer, um, and in my opinion, uh, the best trainer in the state of Vermont. Kathleen Higgs is the uh, the evening activities coordinator, um, and will work with teams as well as uh, organize events in the field house. Sandy Lazarick may work with you as a spring athlete. Um, she's the aquatics director, um, and she will uh, she'll run pool workouts. Um, Kirk Becker, if you haven't met Coach Becker yet, Coach Becker will be um, handling our strength and conditioning. He's our performance enhancement coach. Um, and he is um, um, a new addition uh, for this uh, for this school year. We had uh, Mr. Becker in the winter, and we have him again this spring. Uh, but he's uh, been tasked with um, helping all of our athletes get better as they uh, commit to strength and conditioning, uh, performance training, with the uh, the notion of uh, strengthening um, our bodies as athletes, preventing injuries, um, looking for better stability connective tissue strength, et cetera. Um, so it's, a, it's definitely a plus to have a coach like this, and uh, we're real happy to have uh, Coach Becker um, on our staff this spring. Um, you'll also, at times, uh, associated with athletics from the, the lens of campus life, Beth Schwanier is our assistant headmaster um, uh, for all things campus life, including athletics. And then, um, of course, you have your own coaching staff. Uh, so being that this is simply a recording and you're not going to be moving on to speak with your coaches, um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves if they haven't already in your individual um, practices and you've already met these folks. So they'll be important uh, they'll be important contacts for you, of course. But if you have any questions at any point this spring, I um, would ask you to, uh, to be in touch first with your coaches. Um, they'll handle day-to-day -day information like practice times, equipment, uniform handout, things like that. Um, if you have bigger scale questions that uh, deal more with um, uh, the school um, writ large, certainly contact anyone in the athletic department. Um, if you have questions about um, um, how a team is functioning, playing time, things like that, again, we'd encourage our athletes to speak with coaches first, uh, but as a second, uh, as a second step of reaching out to me here in the athletic department and um, I can help you uh, mediate those discussions and or um, uh, chat with you as a, as a second discussion. Um, so again, we're here to support you. Um, we're looking forward to you participating um, and we see this as a, uh, a joint endeavor where um, coach and student athlete, uh, athletic department and families all together come to make for a, a, a fantastic experience and so we're, uh, we're really excited for the spring and to have something that looks uh, pretty normal after a, uh, a spring last year that was uh, impacted by COVID-19. Uh, the spring before uh, 2020 we did not have a spring season of course so um, we recognize that and so we're just thankful for, for each and every season that we get. Um, I do want to uh, turn your attention to a very important uh, bit of content, and that is um, bullying and harassment. And I actually want to start my comments here uh, because this is an area that's a, a non-negotiable for us. So we firmly believe that every single athlete that participates um, in a sport at St. Johnsbury Academy, um, just as if you were participating in a class, we believe that you have every right um, to be accepted and to be on a great team. And so um, we want to make it clear that we have um, 
We have zero tolerance in uh, athletics uh, for consistent bullying and harassment, and we will uh, we will deal with those situations um, timely um, and make sure that um, those situations are uh, are ended. So um, it's very important that you know who the designees are. So if you feel that you are um, the victim of a bullying, bullying or harassment situation, um, do speak with any of your coaches. Your coaches are mandatory reporters, um, which means that anything you tell them that would um, have to do with your, um, your well-being, your safety, and that's um, mental, physical, emotional, um, that they are a mandatory reporter. So if you feel, feel like you are a victim or if you witness a bullying or harassment situation, um, a coach is a fantastic way to have an immediate report. Um, and they will um, uh, bring that to the right person in campus life. So ultimately, um, assistant head Beshwanyer um, would handle any bullying or harassment situations. Um, but it's important that you know that. On that same note, um, for mandatory reporting, if you were to um, confide in a coach, and we'd encourage you to, to speak um, with the adults that we have on our campus, we have plenty of support staff. If you feel like you um, would like to speak with someone in, in um, a counseling type situation, um, do know that a coach is a great person to go to, but they are as mandatory reporters. Um, they do have to report anything that you share with them, even if it's in um, what's intended to be confidence. Uh, but has to do with your uh, your safety, uh, please note that uh, that coach will be speaking um, with others uh, to make sure that we um, that we protect you um, while your students here under our care. Um, <clears throat> so um, we've started this week so when you're tuning into this we've already had at least a few practices under our belt. Um, so I would um, uh, give you a couple things just to remind you, um, if you haven't yet turned in your paperwork, your coaches will have talked to you. Make sure you've done that. You've taken care of all your paperwork needs. Um, practice times you'll find on um, SCEDA. It's our scheduler app. At least we're going to start the season with SCEDA. And if you need the URL, the website, please stop by the, uh, the field house. Um, you can ask at the desk and we're happy to get you that website. Or you can ask your coach. They should have access to this and, and probably know the website. Um, as you've been practicing, please note um, that as part of a team, um, whenever you practice, you do need to be at a field that has the appropriate uh, safety equipment and, and health equipment. And so um, at every field, we should have water, um, access to ice at least, um, a med kit, and a radio. And so for those of you who are um, tuning in. Um, if you have concerns about that, parents especially know that um, we do have that at each and every practice and we do have a communication mode um, to make sure um, that we can take care of any physical um, any physical injuries right away. Um, and then again when Chris, Chris Despins or at times um, we'll have other trainer trainers on staff to help with uh, with multiple events. Um, do know that we um, were able to get down to, uh, to practice sites uh, pretty quickly quickly to attend to injuries. Um, all coaches have been trained in the Vermont Principals Association protocols, including that of uh, cold and then heat exposure. Um, so especially early season, the cold can be an issue when we're outside. Um, and so coaches will be reminded of those scenarios. But we do encourage you as athletes, make sure that you pack the right gear. So you really ought to have a couple pairs of shoes um, in your in your equipment um, and especially as we bring Fairbanks Field, our turf field, um, which is multi-use um, and will accommodate many of our athletes this year. Um, do pack a couple pairs of shoes. One that early season would be intended for indoors and one that could go out um, onto the turf. Um, but also make sure that you have the right attire. You have a sweatshirt um, that you even pack if you have them, a light pair of gloves and maybe a, a sock cap for some of the early early seasons. Uh, but that's a couple of things that you've probably been told by your coaches, but that's a reminder right now. Um, again, uh, we'll move on to communication. Some things that you should expect to hear from coach to student and then vice versa. Again, from coach to student, practice times, that should be well communicated. Um, parents, I would just encourage you when you look at SCEDA, 
Um, please note that uh, at times your coach uh, may touch base with us and have to alter uh, a practice. And we'll try to get you that information as quickly as possible. Um, but your student athlete has been told that they are the, um, um, they're the best uh, source of information. And so we'd ask you to work with them. And they are being told about changes, um, especially if it's a, a little closer to um, a practice site. If we have weather that changes our situation, might even change the time of when we would practice. So please note that your uh, your student, your son or daughter, um, will reach out to you and, and should let you know of those changes. I'd like to make sure that everybody on this um, on this recording hears that any injuries that you sustain in a practice or a game around our field house or our fields. Um, the, the, those injuries, no matter large or, or small, they should at least be mentioned to Chris Despins. So um, if it's something that would change how you're practicing or whether or not you're practicing especially, um, that definitely needs to be communicated with Chris De Despins. Um, he is, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of this video, he's one of the finest um, trainers we have in terms of treatment. Um, his job is to help get you back on the field um, to compete as quickly as possible. And so it's really important that you let them know, even if you are seeing um, someone outside of campus, if you're seeing your pediatrician or other specialist, do be sure to bring Chris Despins into the conversation. Um, you, you've already participated in tryouts, and I'm going to save any comments, but if you do have um, any questions about the results of your tryout, um, again, uh, the first place to start is to communicate with your coach. For now, um, your coaches have likely told you that they would like you to please check your email regularly. You should be doing this as a St. John's Barry Academy student anyway. Um, you have a St. J. Labs account, and we would ask you to um, go there first as you, uh, as you look for information. Um, if you need help with making sure that your St. J. Labs account pushes to your smartphone, um, and you get announcements there. Um, if you can't figure that out, there are plenty of folks around the field house who should be able to help you with that. Um, but do know that we, uh, that we ask you to communicate via email um, and not via personal phone text. Um, and so text messaging um, is very quick and it's easy, um, but um, we want to reserve that for private communication and not between coaches and athletes. Um, we may, uh, we may be instituting uh, by team some different um, modes of communication that are similar to text, uh, but uh, the format is a little more open and um, uh, everyone is protected in that, uh, in that mode of communication. So there'll be more information from coaches to athletes soon. Uh, another very important communication piece is uh, practice and if you're going to miss uh, practice, um, so first, it's, uh, it's important, student athletes, that you're reminded and that it's very clear that if you miss um, a practice for an unexcused reason, and that for the most part is um, any reason that's not a family emergency or a doctor's appointment, um, it's considered unexcused um, and you would not be able to participate in the next day's event, either practice or game. Uh, but it's also important that you understand from a, a, an attendance standpoint, um, if you're late and you're unexcused, if you oversleep and you arrive on campus, um, you do need to check in at the main office. Um, it's important that you recognize that you're, um, you're not eligible to, um, to participate that afternoon. You would be expected to attend um, a practice and observe, but you wouldn't be able to be a participant. Um, extended leaves. Um, I'm going to direct all students uh, to come to me. So if, um, if you are watching this video and for the first time hearing um, about extended leaves, including vacation break over April, um, I think you'll find um, that a, a meeting with me will help clarify um, what that will look like. But it's important that you understand that our commitment is asking you to not travel over the April break and to stay through the duration of the season. So again, um, if you're committing as an athlete, the, the rule of thumb is that you're not traveling uh, simply for vacation over the April break. If there is a family emergency and we realize that maybe there are a few more of those than in previous years, just given the challenges around travel, um, 
then please come in and uh, initiate a conversation with me and we can talk through the situation. Um, I'd also, again, let's come back to the end of the season. So as a general rule, if you uh, make a JV um, sub-varsity team, the expectation is that you will stay through the end of May. Um, that is when the regular season ends for junior varsity or any sub-varsity team. Um, if you um, should earn your way onto a varsity squad, and I'll talk about the difference in philosophy and the team set up in just a moment, but if you, if you should earn a way on, onto a varsity team, it's important that you understand that we expect that you stay through um, the final date on the calendar um, on which we could play, not simply by schedule. So um, please note that you're committing to a time frame and not a published schedule. So for nearly all teams, that time frame is from this past Monday, Monday the 21st of March, through June 10 and 11. So that's the last possible play date um, for playoffs and tournament play, and so it's important as you're considering the commitment um, that you understand that. If you can't make that commitment, um, we are sorry, but um, uh, we, would, we would direct you to non-interscholastic sporting activities, um, some clubs and some other activities on campus, but um, uh, interscholastic sport would not be a good fit. Um, just so there's transparency, I do want to make sure from a communication standpoint that you understand what's happening um, from the athletic department to coaching staffs. Um, first of all, uh, before about uh, midway through any given week for the next week, um, our department will publish a This Week in Sports uh, schedule, and that's a uh, all competitions um, that will be in the next week. So it's not just an individual team schedule, but it's all the, uh, all the team's games away and home for the next week. Um, as a general rule, um, athletes, you'll be told a departure time your release from class, um, when um, there is a conflict, your release is 15 minutes beforehand. Um, if you do need to um, see Chris Despins for any treatment before um, leaving to go on a, on a road game, uh, please A, make sure that Chris is in agreement with your doing so. There are some treatments that don't really make sense before you get um, on a bus to travel uh, uh, for a lengthy period of time, but make sure that he approves. And then this is really important, um, it, actually from your coach. Your coach is the one who should um, give you a signed note that you can take to your, your teachers to let them know that you need to get out a little bit early. You do not need a note um, for your teachers to let them know that you're leaving um, in a timely fashion and according to the schedule. Uh, but that's uh, that information, that schedule is put out by my office and it's communicated with all faculty and staff and certainly to your coaches. The athletic department produces the SCETA calendar um, and that's something that we publish and like I said is, is viewable for all. It's an open document, an open HTML. Um, coaches will communicate with me about time switches or cancellations and our policy is that um, there needs to be a, a, a valid reason for canceling, but could include um, weather, um, athlete health, etc. Um, cuts and roster moves are also discussed with the athletic department, and so um, again, as you're, as you're making teams, um, please know that that's a, that's a discussion that's happened. We, uh, we send out all information regarding paperwork and updates. Um, if you feel like um, you're being asked to produce something in, in terms of paperwork, a physical form, et cetera, and you feel like you've already turned it in, please let us know. You can come to the athletic department on that, but we communicate with your coaches on that. Um, yeah, and then certainly there are, other, um, there are some other publications um, that we'll put out at times throughout the season. Um, with the spring, we'll be also talking to parents um, about uh, end-of-year celebrations and um, uh, full full year athletic award ceremonies and things like that. Um, again, you've already gone through um, the uh, the tryout procedure. Um, your coaches have uh, have been communicative with you about those tryouts. Um, uh, some other general communications. Um, again, um, I've already mentioned missing practice. Um, 
Resident students, please know that um, uh, for April vacation, there will be housing provided for you uh, to stay. I do want to talk a little bit about uh, playing time and our philosophy for uh, sub-varsity and varsity teams. Uh, for sub-varsity teams, so those are JV teams, um, it's our expectation that all players who are in good standing, they've been attending practices and they're healthy, that you will get playing time during a competition. Um, what we do not guarantee is that all playing time will be equal, but we do guarantee that you will get a chance to develop. Um, we, uh, we oftentimes will say that uh, practice is probably more important than competitions, uh, but I'd modify that statement and say we realize that, that competition does provide unique opportunities for you to grow and learn um, in your sport. And so uh, playing time is uh, something, again, if you're in good standing, you will get at the sub-varsity level. Um, if you are on a varsity team, the expectation is that we put the most competitive team out on uh, any given field um, or, or playing, playing arena. Um, and so we say that uh, to note that, yes, we do play as varsity teams to win. Um, and that is certainly a, uh, we, we see that as a goal, or really a byproduct of being most competitive. Um, but um, the varsity team, at times, if you are um, uh, in a game that has become less competitive, um, it is our expectation that at the coach's discretion that they are working to get athletes potential playing time again. Um, those athletes are still learning and growing. Um, but I, I did want to mention that, and I do think it's important that we're all on the same page. So if you have any questions about playing time, student athletes, it's in your co court first. Um, if you would like to know what it is that um, your coach is seeing and what you can do to improve and po possibly earn playing time in this season or the next, um, do, do set up a time to speak with that coach either um, before or after, but certainly outside of uh, the practice the practice time. Um, that would be a good first communication and important for uh, um, important for you as a as a student ath athlete to uh, uh, to learn a little bit about where you stand and also to uh, potentially um, advocate for yourself um, and and find out what you need to know to uh, to improve as an athlete. Okay. Um, if you have questions, I'm going to encourage you to come and see um, any of the representatives that I've uh, that I mentioned at the beginning of this recording uh, in the athletic department. Happy to speak with you further and uh, talk about any questions you might have. And um, if the person you uh, if you connect with doesn't have the answer, they'll make sure that they get you pointed toward uh, the person who does. So um, I will uh, I will let you know that your coach has the rest of the information um, that we would have gone over at Meet the Coaches, and I'd encourage you to speak with him or her um, about what that information was if you haven't done so already. All right, we look forward to uh, your further participation this spring. I wish you all the best. Um, it's great to have you as a Hilltopper athlete. Um, and parents, it's great to have you as well. If you have questions, let me know. And we'll see you, uh, if not before, we'll see you out on the playing fields.